you know, my work is aimed at, at broadening the conversation about agentic schools. I mean, that's why I have the program, right? And, and one of the challenges I find is that, is that people, one of the ways our brain is wired is to justify the system of which we are a part. It doesn't matter what it is. Once we're in the system, we want the system to, we have a sensibility about the system and its, its existence. Just in the same way that we always have our own self-concept and that, that our existence is, I mean, assuming you're not in complete depression, but, um, you know, w when we're healthy, we have a sense of ourselves, but we also inherently have a sense of the system of which we're part. And so there's this thing called system justification that that we are always justifying the system. So when it's hard when, when we come and, and say, we've got this thing that works really great and that system doesn't work. And so people in part of that system, one of the challenges is if they're in the system and, they're, and, and we know that they're subject to system justification by nature, then, then one of the challenges we have is like, how do we help them understand their situation without rejecting our input, you know, without rejecting it outright? And so that's one of the challenges that I see is, is well, how to sort of... That's really interesting. Getting back to the stick figures, not everyone becomes system justified, as you're calling it, um, because there are people who get angry, who rebel, right, right. who say this is awful, get me out of here, whatever, both in right, school right. and in organizations and in our country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of the points that I make in terms of kids in schooling is those are the healthier kids. In mm. my opinion, it is a mm. much healthier response to say, I hate this, get me out of here. Right, and to right, become right. the little kid who takes the pat on the head from the teacher and becomes set up for victimization of some sort right. because they become submissive to authority rather than ever question authority. They become, mm -hmm. they search out getting that approval for doing what this autocratic boss wants them to do. And they mm -hmm. are much more at risk for victimization in their lives. And I have a real concern about that because 90% of kids in every classroom are being set up for victimization. Only 10% become the angry, get me out of here kid because they're told they're the bad ones. And everybody in the classroom comes to believe that bad kid. And mm -hmm. that is such a dysfunctional way of right. dealing with people's reaction to a system. If a system right. is healthy and thriving and joyful and what life is supposed to be, people don't get angry and rebel. There is no such mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. They want to be there. Right. They love it. Right. When somebody's yeah, rebelling, we need to say why, not label them right, as a right. bad person. But I'm right. my concern is for the people who become system justified because they are really slowly but surely being set up for victimization, possibly. And that's right, a real right. concern. And, and that's what I mean is that our barbarian is wired to justify the system and what we're what we're aiming at is that they understand a larger system. Once they recognize that school is a system that's confined and it's, it operates in a certain way, then they recognize there's a different way to be. You know, that's, the, that's the kind of step towards enlightenment that we want. Is, is as long, so I guess what I'm saying is that, that our, how we approach people in the mainstream system is we want to approach them in a way that leads them towards the sort of realizing the system's bigger than their school and uh, doing it in a way that, that bridges that gap rather than reinforces their defense of the system. Is because once I, they realize I a have, bigger system is possible. I have, there was a time that I believed that. Let me start there. Okay. <laughs> and I don't anymore. Because to me, that is one of the subtle, benevolent ways of doing this. Mm. And what I mean by that is, 
I am more than willing to share everything I've seen that's so positive in Sudbury mm -hmm. schools and in giving children freedom and autonomy and agency over their own lives as well as their own education. Mm -hmm. I'll share, mm -hmm. you know, anytime, day or night, I'll, and I do it for free. I never charge for anything. I'll give a talk anywhere. But I won't, I don't want to spend any of my time having an agenda for the system or having mm. an agenda for anyone else. Mm. Because to me, that's part of that. You know, I, w I was a kid who just wanted to make the world a better place. But I realized mm. what I need to do is keep making my world a better place. That's right. my inner wisdom telling me that. And that every time I try to do for them what mm -hmm. they're capable of doing for themselves, having an aha moment when they hear something, having getting um, access to first their own discomfort in the system, because unless they're willing to admit that, they're not going to go looking for something else. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Like oh, the absolutely. kids call this the done to. Method. Done to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody likes to be done to. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Right. And the more I got that, the more I understood. That's why I left the traditional system years ago. I was trying to get them to change. And it's, whoa, right. wait a minute, they're, they're fine where they are. I'm the one that wants to change. I need out of here <laughs> right. so I can right. change. And that's been a progressive theme in my life mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have no agenda for where anyone else needs to be. I will mm -hmm. tell you that I see the school system as a highly dysfunctional system. And, right. but I wish them well. If that's working for some people right now, I don't think, I think they're in denial, which is part right, of right. the addictive system. I will say that publicly. I worked in a prison as a therapist for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I was way more emotionally comfortable there than I am in most high schools. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's a, a more enjoyable environment. Mm. That's very sad. You walk right. down, every classroom looks like this in most high schools. They're bored. At the time, they should be most alive. I'll say what I see. I'll say my mm -hmm. truth. I'll say what I've experienced. But I don't want to have any agenda about trying to um, convince or, or fix mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a sick system till it wants to right, fix right. itself and then I'll help in right. whatever way. Right. Well, you'll notice I'm talking to you. I'm not trying to go preach to them. Right. Right. That's why I love your podcast. You're, no, what do you call this? A video podcast? Podcast. Yes. Vlog? Yes. Uh, yes. So I get it. So, so this is the contradiction of holding, holding the space is how to share, share out and give them a you know give them the opportunity because mm -hmm. and the way I do that is through online distribution. That's and I um, love this because you're doing it. If they right, want right, to exactly. search, they will find you. Exactly, exactly. So the, so that's what I what I've realized is that the agenda is not an agenda specifying what they should do or shouldn't do. The agenda is how do we share this more broadly? How do we how do we give our experience voice and, and, and exposure in the sense of invitation? Invitation to a different way of being, a different way of doing school. Now, I'm not going to dictate what that looks like, and that's why I use the term agentic schools. Is It's not Sudbury. It's not Acton Academies, or it's not Montessori, it's not Waldorf, it's not, you know, you could, I, can, I can list off a lot of different ways that people do it. The question is, is once you get the bug to do something different, what opportunity do you have? What opportunity do you have to do it differently, to, to take wherever you are 
and 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 understand the psychological principles this is this is my uh communicative agenda is like there's psycho there's a way that our brains are wired that has to do with autonomy competence and relatedness that's my focus and how do you bring that to whatever situation you're in once you once you have that insight then okay how do you do that well you've done it <laughs> through Sudbury and that's that's fantastic and I I applaud that but I also see that there's I don't know what opportunities my audience has I don't know what opportunities they can bring maybe they're in the system and they have an opportunity to do something to to bring policy changes that could steer the system in a different direction that's one of the things I wrote about in in my book is like let's let's use the levers of of the institutions to to for the people who have that opportunity and and do something with it and there's ways that we can sort of start to apply pressure that pressure in the sense of once there's an opening then something can happen differently than it was before and that's the nature of human systems they change they're complex and they're adaptive <laughs> and so it may look like starting new schools it may look like changing schools that already exist it may look like using charters or private school whatever whatever opportunity they have and this is a very you know i've i've been interviewing people from around the world so that might be different in different countries it might be different in different states it might be different in one school versus another so 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 that's that the agenda is not you need to be different the agenda is if you want different things here's some ways to you know here here's some people like Jerry, <laughs> who are doing something different are ha and, and do it. And every conversation is different <laughs> because it is unique. You're a unique person. You did it your way, but you did it in community. You did it with a perspective on, from Rhea Nysar. I, uh, uh, Daniel Quinn's, Ishmael. I forget what his books were called. Yeah, yeah Ishmael. That was an influencer series for me. Uh, expanding on that was uh, my friend Sharif Abdullah, who wrote Creating a World That Works for All. Mm -hmm. So he took it in another direction. There's David Corten, who's uh, one of the founders of Yes Magazine. Chellis Glendinning. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who've kind of been pointing out how our culture has deep roots in a certain way of being that is not working for most of the humans in it. Mm -hmm. But we also know that in our deeper past, there was a different relationship and a different way of being pointing to those partnership cultures to put it in uh, exactly Daniel Quinn's terms, it's levers. A, different way, a totally <laughs> different way of being and living. And, and exactly. yet we all know it in our hearts because I'm telling you, I have asked thousands of people over, gosh, probably 30 years, like from the early mm -hmm. 90s. I've yep, been yep. doing talks and, and and everyone knows it in their heart. And yet, because in my opinion, they are schooled, which right. comes <laughs> with a very deep belief system, they can't act on it for the most part. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. if they act on it for themselves, they don't act on it for their children. Mm. Yeah, and that's a big challenge. That's sad. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Berg.